Ever since we discovered the beauty of the Baja Peninsula in 2019, we've fallen more and more in love with its landscapes, culture, wildlife, and cuisine. After spending nearly six months of each of the last five years exploring Baja, we've learned how much we love sharing these things with other like-minded travelers. We invite you to join us in a once-in-a-lifetime adventure. If you've ever dreamt of exploring Baja but hesitated because of the thought of going solo, let us show you the magic of our Baja Amigos caravans. Our caravans are more than just a mode of travel. They're a community where you'll meet kindred spirits, forge enduring friendships, and create memories that will last a lifetime. You're not just a traveler, you're a part of our family. For the next couple of hours, join us for a virtual journey through the best of Baja during our 30-day caravans. You'll encounter the good, the extraordinary, and even a few unexpected surprises that will make you realize the benefits of being a part of a caravan. Every day is a new adventure and we can't wait to share it with you. Caravans are not for everyone. But after you see the beauty that Baja has to offer and the fun that comes with exploring the peninsula with others, we think you'll be ready to hit the road with us. It is a brisk, brisk morning here in Potrero County Park, just east of San Diego, about 45 minutes, about an hour and a half uh, west of El Centro. It's a great staging area for a caravan. Super excited because I'm going to Baja today. Every time we leave and head north and cross the border, it, uh, it bums me out and I'm excited that I get to go back and get to take some wonderful people with us. It's gonna be an awesome 30 days that we're gonna spend together and there's gonna be warmth just south of here uh, a day or two, hopefully. Uh, it's March and it should be warmer, but uh, I'm, I'm super excited. I, I love, I love, I love, I love going to Baja and I love sharing that with people and that's what we get to do over the next 30 days. Looks like everyone in our caravan is lined up and ready to go. So we are going to get on with our little morning meeting. Basically, every morning that we are going somewhere new, we have a pre-meeting just to tell everyone um, what to expect. Um, so we are going to cross at Tecate. You have the notes about and yours in case you don't see the person in front if you happen to get inspected or whatever. It's down the hill, two blocks, take a left. It says three blocks in the yeah. three blocks. It says three, three blocks. blocks. <laughs> At the square. I read it last night too, Frank. Yeah. yeah, you dead end into the square and then you take a left and then you'll take the immediate right around the square, that, the corner of the square there. If you get stopped at any of the stoplights on the way or you're slowed down, don't worry. We're all on the same road and you're going to meet up with us eventually. Um, we'll, we will go slow. Lindsay and I are super paranoid about making sure that we can see everybody visually. So don't panic if you end up getting stuck behind, cars cut you off and you miss a light. We're all together, we'll all be together. Um, just take your time and catch up. We don't do cheese anymore, we're gonna do queso. One, three, queso. 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 One, two, three, queso. 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 There we go. We are off. We have about a 10 minute drive to the Decate border. And then we are going to hop on Highway 3 and head off to Valley de Guadalupe. It's about a 45 minute drive um, from Tecate and we are going to be camping at a campground called uh, Rancho Sordo Mudo. It is in the heart of Valley de Guadalupe. Here we go. I love going to Mexico. Ooh, ooh. Here we go. She loves going to Mexico. Hey puppies, we're going back to Mexico. We are going to Mexico. Or Baja. I think you know Baja more than Mexico because we usually say Baja. <laughs> oh, oh. Here we go. I am going to ba Baja. It doesn't rhyme. Yeah. Baja. It sounds better in Mexico. Yeah, it sounds better in Mexico. We're going to Mexico. <laughs> Love it. We are coming up on the Tecate border, and the most important thing <laughs> that you need to have is your vehicle registration. That is the one thing that they are going to ask for um, when you pull up and they do your RV inspection basically okay and then the other important thing is is you need to get your FMM stamped if you do not park your RV at the border and go into immigration office and get this if you do not get that you are in Mexico illegally so you need this they will um, stamp it for up to 180 days we always get the 180 day stamp even if we're only gonna be here for a month we just always get that so and we are here. We're going to come across and I'm going to have to turn the camera off. And we're through. I think that was one of the easiest border crossings we've ever had. 
Like, so, and the inspection lady, she just came in, and I mean, she looked in here for maybe three seconds. <laughs> and then she was on her way. So, super easy. Um, we now are going through Tecate, and we have our caravan behind us. It looks like mostly everyone is through, and we are just going to be driving super slow through town so that everyone um, can catch back up with us. Welcome to Rancho Sordo Mudo and Valle de Guadalupe. I love this place. I love Valle de Guadalupe. It is a beautiful, beautiful part of Baja California and the northern state. And we are about to go on our winery tour. Our tour guides just got here and we're all gonna pile in and go taste some wonderful wine. What a fun day we had today in Valle de Guadalupe. We are now back from our rendezvous to all the different wineries that we went to. And we are feeding our dogs dinner and getting ready to wind down for the night. Today we are taking our caravan from Valle de Guadalupe down just south of San Quentin. So we have to drive everyone through Ensenada. It's gonna be a little crazy, a little hectic. It always is driving through Ensenada. It is a big, busy city. And I think rain is in the forecast, so we'll see. I hope it doesn't rain. It usually, it's very rare that it rains here in Baja. So a little odd that rain is in the forecast, but we are on the Pacific side and it tends to be a little wetter on the Pacific side, I guess. Um, but I hope it doesn't. <laughs> so we will see when we get there. We have, it's a long drive day. Uh, Google says about four hours. I think it's going to be more closer to around six for us. Hopefully no issues. We get there all safely. I know we will. It's going to be a good day. It is almost 9 a.m. and everyone is lined up and ready to go. So let's get a move on. Let's get on the road. Ready to start planning your Baja camping adventure but not sure where to begin? Purchase our guidebook through the link below and learn everything you need to know to plan the journey of a lifetime. We cover everything from what you need to know to prepare for the trip, to what to expect while traveling, as well as helpful tips and insights into what to do and where to stay. This book will give you the confidence to explore Baja, whether you join one of our caravans or not. 
I mentioned earlier that we would have no issues driving through Ensenada today. Well, we just hit an issue. <laughs> so, uh, bad construction. It was a two lane road. They basically, because of the construction, narrowed it down to one lane road. There were all these trucks trying to merge over. Um, and it was just a horrible intersection. And then after that, we the lanes split. One road goes towards Tijuana, the other goes to Ensenada. We're supposed to stay on the overpass on the one heading towards Ensenada. So we took the, you know, the correct way. We went the overpass, but because of that horrible intersection, like all of our people basically got stuck at that intersection. Um, so we have half of our group, we're waiting on the other half, and hopefully that they, they did take that overpass towards Ensenada and not towards Tijuana. <laughs> hopefully they're not on their way towards Tijuana right now. So we are currently pulled over on the side of this really busy road in Ensenada, waiting for the rest of our caravan to catch up. And I'm praying that- Hi, Martin. I just called. Chris Are you guys all right? Are you? That's the other half of our oh, okay. caravan. Seeing where they are. We knew that construction was pretty bad, but then when we didn't see you for quite a few more minutes, I got a little concerned. So I'm glad you guys figured it out. We've got everybody else just, just waiting on you three. Okay. We got everyone back together now. So that was Chris on the phone with um, Perfect, one, of our, thanks, one of the people on our caravan. There were three of them um, that got lost at that crazy intersection with all the construction. We got them back now. So we, oh, that was fun. <laughs> Everyone's back together, so. Thankfully, we were able to pull over there um, and we had uh, cell service. And we are, we are in Ensenada, a big city here in Baja in the northern state. Um, and we were able to get them back. So they are now, we're all back together again and we are gonna continue south. <laughs> Yeah, the intersection so, is a light, so do you watch the light? The fun continues. More construction. So that just took us off route. <laughs> oh, Mexico. Um, yeah, now we gotta find our way back to Highway 1. This has been a fun adventure, so I guess we're gonna drive down this road until we see anything that can get us back onto Highway 1. Um, so it goes. And the Ensenada saga continues. <laughs> oh man. So we made a left down a side street so we could get back on the one. We're almost to the one, except that our caravan did not turn left with us. Some of them did, but hi. I think we're gonna be making some phone calls. <laughs> Ooh, it's been, uh, this has been an adventure. This has been quite an adventure, yeah. Nobody's fault, just uh, that's what happens in the city when you're driving with multiple RVs. But we all got it together, that's what the radios are for, and our cell phones work perfect. So, thank you, Telcel. <laughs> and thank you, Ensenada. Oh, the good thing about Baja is that for most of the peninsula, there's one road. <laughs> so, even if we were to get lost here, it's always um, easy to find your way back to the right direction. Uh, Highway 1 is basically the main road for 75 if not, 75 percent if not more um, of the peninsula. So um, we will, yeah, so we're on Highway 1. We're collecting everyone back together now. I think we just, we just pulled off onto the side. Um, just to get everyone back because uh, I think we just went through a light that turned uh, yep. It was green when we went through but then it turned red so and uh, yeah 
we're off again. <laughs> Hopefully now that we have no more turns, um, everyone stays together and that there's no more construction. So we just had a, our first body break on our way, heading south to St. Catine. We got everyone together and now it's just an easy, easy to stay on the one straight to St. Catine. So I think we have a second body break um, and then we will be at our destination on the beach and hopefully we can um, enjoy the beach and our time there before the rain comes. It's supposed to um, rain tonight or actually pour tonight. <laughs> That's going to be fun. Um, and then tomorrow we head even further south. We have finally, finally arrived at the hotel parking lot. We are spending the night in tonight um, just south of San Catine. I think it's Lazaro Cardenas is where uh, the little town that we are staying at tonight. And it is windy. It is a little chilly and it's supposed to rain a bunch tonight. So hopefully it's not too muddy when we get out of here in the morning. Um, today was a long day. We got in not one, not two, but three horrible construction spots. The third one I did not film um, because it just happened, it happened so fast. Uh, but they are completely repaving the road and they just jutted us off the road on a horrible dirt road and then made us get back on at this horrible angle. Like I thought, our camper was going to flip over. Um, we made the rest of our caravan uh, stay straight down the road and um, pretty much only us went up at that angle and it was kind of scary. <laughs> but uh, we finally made it. We're here. We're all safe. It's fun time now. Let's go play some frisbee on the beach. This is a really beautiful beach. We're on the Pacific side, La Lazaro Cardenas. It's also a great beach to find sand dollars. Um, there are sand dollars and clamshells everywhere. So if you like cute little sand dollars, this is a great beach to find those on. If these were real dollars, I'd be rich. No, you'd have $5. <laughs> What a great group of people. I swear we have lucked out twice now. We have an amazing, amazing group of people in our caravan. And I think we just sat outside for a couple hours talking with them after we hung out on the beach. I had to come in and make dinner and then it started raining. So Chris came inside. I just made a uh, Korean beef bowls, some ground beef here. This is what my kitchen looks like when I cook because I have zero counter space. It's fun, but I love I love my little kitchen. I'm not complaining. So I got my little Korean beef bowl. Pretty easy, just some jasmine rice, some ground beef, and some green onions. One of my easy yet favorite dishes. We're about to sit down and eat that. So. Hopefully it doesn't rain too much tonight because we are in like a dirt lot. But it rains in Baja. It, yeah, it's, it's it hardly desert. ever rains in Baja, but it's raining. It's rained on us more this season that we've been down here than ever before. So yeah, we're winding down. I'm gonna eat dinner. You're eating my dinner. That's mine. It's good. <laughs> so we're here. We're safe. Um, a good but eventful day. 
And uh, yeah, so yep, time to wind down, call it a night, eat dinner, and tomorrow we're driving again. If you're interested in exploring Baja in your RV, but would rather worry about what flavor of margarita to enjoy instead of how to navigate the logistics of driving and camping, we invite you to join one of our caravans. Professional wagon masters like ourselves, with years of experience living and traveling in Baja, will lead you on an unforgettable adventure where you can relax more and enjoy traveling with others. Check out the link below to learn more and sign up for one of our unique caravan experiences. It rained off and on last night and this morning, so we did wake up to somewhat of a muddy mess outside, but we still stayed until we're still here. It's about 11 a.m. Um, just enjoying this area and the beach. And even though with the rain, it's still been beautiful here. We had a rainbow um, this morning that Chris sent me a picture of. I tried to run out and catch it, but by then it was already gone. I just finished cooking breakfast and now it's time to get back on the road. Nice and sunny now, of course, right when we leave. <laughs> And we are going to make our way to the beautiful desert cactus garden of Catavina. Can't wait to show you guys. It is a beautiful but very rural area of Baja. Um, just right almost smack dab in the middle. And um, it is insane. It is so pretty. And we are going to take a drive up to um, some cave paintings that are very old. Um, and it's a really cool cave, so can't wait to show you. Let's get on the road. So we just had our first casualty of the trip. Um, we had a truck passing us, passing our caravan in the left lane, and he got way too close um, to the van that's directly behind us, and he took off their driver's side mirror. And of course he didn't stop, he kept on going which I don't know if you knew what he did, but we saw it happen. Chris saw it happen in our mirrors, saw him get way too close. And then sure enough, we hear on our walkie talkie that their um, mirror, glass in their mirror is broken. I don't know, we need to find a place to pull over. And of course there are no <laughs> pull offs um, that we can see. So it'll probably be a few minutes and then we will assess the damage. I only got a couple of those on camera, but that was a massive, massive caravan of RVs, like huge 45 foot class A's. And a couple, a couple of uh, big fifth wheels just passed us. It looked like one of the big, I mean, I don't know how they do. Another one took a mirror off. Oh crap. We might have had another mirror casualty. <laughs> All right, we just found a pull off. Um, so we got to check out our people. I think we lost a couple of mirrors. We're okay. We tuck our mirrors in as best we can. Fortunately for us, we're able to do that on our motor home, but there's some RVs or some trucks that their mirrors don't fold in. They only just stick out. So it's, it's really hard on these narrow, narrow roads and um, this is why sometimes caravans are a good idea and sometimes they're not a good idea. Um, we keep our caravans small. We don't like to do more than eight RVs. Uh, so that big massive caravan was Fantasy Tours. They had, I think like 26 massive RVs. Like massive RVs. And four of them were driving in the wrong lane. And yeah, four of them were in the wrong lane. And uh, one of them, almost took off a mirror of one of our um, people in the back. And one just about hit a trailer slide. And one just about hit a trailer, one of the trailers. So that was uh, un <laughs> not fun at all, but everyone's okay. Um, the van, or the ladies in the van behind us in our caravan, their um, mirror just got basically just slightly nicked. It didn't break. Um, it was just kind of crooked and she was able to pop it back into place. So we were good. Just very, very close calls there. Not 
cool at all. Welcome to Catavania. I absolutely love this part of the one. Um, and if you never drive the one, you won't ever see it. it it's so worth it. It's so worth it to take the one just to see this part of Baja because it just, it takes my breath away every time we drive through it or see it. It's just, it's just incredible. We have arrived at our um, camp spot in Catavina, and we are camped at a place called Rancho Santa Inez. Um, it is basically the only, it's not really a campground, but they have like a huge gravel lot that can fit. I mean, gosh, you could probably fit like 100 RVs in this lot, but it's just boondocking. You just find a spot. They have little fire pits just around everywhere. Um, and we kind of made like a little square here to kind of block the wind because we'll probably maybe have a fire tonight and have a little happy hour. Um, they'll also make dinner for you. Um, she just offered us dinner. She offered us two tacos, an enchilada, rice and beans for 150 pesos, which is a steal of a deal. So we are definitely doing it. I think everyone's going. So that's going to be fun. So we're going to go do our hike to the cave paintings. And then we're going to come back and enjoy a delicious dinner and then have a little happy hour hangout. It is a gorgeous day here in Catavina. So we're taking the group out hiking to go see the pictographs and uh, the flowers right now it's amazing the the desert flowers are blooming and it is absolutely spectacular it's about a quarter mile hike and definitely worth it um, not a lot of incline so it's doable um, pretty easily and just so much to see so much beauty out here to enjoy you're literally in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the Baja Peninsula where it's just a totally different unique kind of beauty here Well, our time at Catavina has sadly come to an end. We are packing up the RV right now to get ready to go. We are slowly but surely making our way from Catavina to Guerrero Negro. But before you get to Guerrero Negro, there is a section um, on Highway 1 that right now for in the foreseeable future is in pretty rough shape. Um, there are lots of potholes. Um, a storm recently came through just
this last year, 2023, that basically, I think we're starting to hit it now, basically took off like the first layer of asphalt. So they're just potholes upon potholes upon potholes. And I'm hoping that soon that the government are, that they fix this road. Um, Cause it is the only, it is the only way down to Baja Sur and it's the only way up from Baja Sur to Baja Norte. So you will have to drive over this on your RV and you just need to take it nice and slow. Um, it's really the only way around it. Um, the road is also very narrow um, for this stretch, so always, always mind the semi trucks that are going to come at you and possibly pass you. Um, and we always tell everyone we tuck our mirrors in. Um, fortunately for us, our mirrors on our Class C motorhome, they they pivot in or they, they can be folded in, but then also the mirror can be pivoted outwards. So that's what we do is we bring the mirror in closer to us, but then pivot the mirror a little out just so they're not sticking out fully extended because you will come across a lot of people that lose their mirrors. Um, and what's funny enough, it's not, a lot of times they don't lose them to, to um, semi trucks, they lose them to other RVers that have their mirrors fully extended and then you have your mirrors fully extended and then they hit each other as you're, as you're passing by on this narrow road. So be mindful of that. That's our, uh, our big tip. <laughs> our, one of our big tips that we tell everyone um, that's RVing down here. So we just went through the agricultural station. Um, you'll have to go through as you're coming into Baja California Sur. Um, it's right before the town of Guerrero Negro. You do have to stop. It is, so basically you're leaving Baja California and entering Baja California Sur, and it's two different agricultural points, right? So they don't want you to be bringing in pests from the north into the south. So basically what they do is they ask for a 20 peso donation and they spray the underside of your vehicle for pests. So here is our receipt. He should ask you for 20 pesos, no more. If he asks you for more than 20 pesos, he is trying to rip you off. It is 20 pesos and he should give you this receipt right here. It says on it 20 pesos. All right, we've heard people go through and they're asking for way more than 20 pesos, which is wrong. Um, you should not need to give them any more than this amount and get this receipt from them. Baja California, sir. I love it. <laughs> love getting down here. Hate leaving. Love getting here. Have arrived in Guerrero Negro and we are at Malarimo's RV Park. This RV park is right in the middle. It's like right in the middle of town. Um, it's the only RV park that is in Guerrero Negro um, Central, basically in town. So you're close. You're like within walking distance of everything. Grocery stores, uh, Tony's Tacos, which is a favorite. Um, he is known to make the best fried fish and shrimp tacos in all of Baja. Um, we went there and got a snack. Um, right after we arrived and now we are here and we are about to go to dinner we are having our hosted dinner tonight with the caravan with our group of people and we are doing it at the restaurant that's at Malarimo's um, they serve delicious seafood so I'm super excited about that I've already looked at the menu and picked out what I want to eat and then tomorrow bright and early we are gonna go on our whale watching trip it's actually it's more than just whale watching. It is an absolute incredible experience. It is life changing and I'm so excited. Every year I'm super, super, super stoked to go out and see the gray whales. It is probably my absolute favorite thing to do here in Baja. Today is the morning and I'm so, 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 so excited. Just fed the dogs. It is right before 7.30 and about to walk out and go meet up with my tour guide to take us on our whale petting boat. So this is whale petting. It is not your typical whale watching tour. We are going out to pet the whales and 
Oh, I'm so excited. Yes, I've done this before and it is absolutely so magical. It is life changing. It is a must do if you ever come to Baja from January um, through March. You have to come to one of the lagoons in Baja and go see the uh, gray whales. Um, it's just absolutely, absolutely amazing. So the gray whales or they are Mexican by birth. They come here in the winter and to the warm lagoons on the Baja Peninsula. There are three or four different lagoons. There is um, Guerra Negro is the town, or Ojo de Libre is the lagoon, and then there's San Ignacio Laguna. And then further south, closer to La Paz, Magdalena Bay is the other lagoon. Um, that you can go see and pet the gray whales. So they make their annual trek down here in the winter from Alaska from their feeding grounds. They come here to breed and to give birth to their calves. Um, in these warm lagoons they are protected from the orcas that um, try to eat their babies. And the orcas cannot get into the lagoons, um, but the gray whales can, and that is their safe haven. It's very salty and buoyant for them. They teach their babies how to swim, and then off they go back to Alaska to go and eat. And then they come back down and do it all over again. When you get the chance to look a gray whale in the eye, it's just, it's life changing. They are amazing, amazing, amazing creatures. And they literally come up to the boat to interact with humans. And it's just, it's just an incredible experience. So we're gonna get to go do that today. Um, we're going with Malarimo's tour. They have the RV park here, so you can camp here in your RV. And then they pick you up in one of their vans right here at the campground. So pretty awesome. And then I think it's about a 30 minute 20 minute, 30 minute drive out, um, and then a quick boat ride into the lagoon. And basically what they do is they just cut the engine on the boat and we just sit there and we wait for the gray whales to approach us. So hopefully we get some amazing interactions and I hope we get some amazing interactions with a baby as well. I haven't had an experience with a baby. We've had some pretty incredible experience with adult gray whales coming up to the boat. But it'd be really, really, really cool if um, a mom pushed a baby up. Uh, and they do. They'll, they will do that. Uh, pretty cool. So let's go. I'm ready. <laughs> amazing day we had on the water this morning we had great I mean like fantastic weather apparently it had been windy and terrible all week 
Um, in fact, even the day before, uh, the tour guides are telling us that it was just, it was just uh, windy and rough out and it was really hard for the whales to come up to the boat. Um, but today, there was like hardly any wind. It was decently calm and we had some pretty great interactions, right? And now, we uh, fortunately have to leave. We only have um, our first part of the caravan. We basically just have one night, one night, one night, one night until we get to um, the Bay of Conception. And then we start uh, getting to spend more than just one night in places because it's nice and warm once we get to um, Mulahe and further south. Um, the cold weather has kind of been chasing us here. Uh, yes, you heard it right. It does get cold in Mexico, especially in northern Mexico, especially on the Pacific side and in the middle of the um, in the middle of the country or middle of the state. It can get it can get kind of cold. So the cold weather has been chasing us. Um, it's in the 60s today. Hopefully not too cold when we get to San Ignacio, and then by the time we get. Um, to Mulahe and Bay of Conception. It should be in the 70s and the 80s. It's gonna be shorts and bathing suit weather. Can't wait. But today we have uh, San Ignacio in our sights. We have a checkpoint we have to go through. It is the probably known as the worst checkpoint in all of Baja. Um, for some reason that checkpoint just gets a bad rep. Um, we've been searched there multiple times. Um, multiple people I've read have said that they've had things, uh, just little things taken or the guys try to like, you know, try to get away with getting stuff. Um, most of the time the military uh, guards there, they're just bored and they're young guys and they just, they just want to take a look around and chat and, and a lot of times they appreciate if you, you want to give them a water or a snack. We don't usually do that. We just ask them how they're doing and we answer their questions and usually they wave us on through. A lot of times the checkpoints when you're heading back north is when you're going to get stopped and looked at. Um, but just so you know, the San Ignacio checkpoint is known to stop you and um, inspect your RV. So beware of that. Oh, the infamous San Ignacio checkpoint after I warned all of you about it. We get stopped and of course he wants to inspect our RV. We have our whole caravan behind us. Yeah, they wave all them through and we're stopped and we're supposed to be leading our caravan. <laughs> so now our caravan's all in front of us and they have no idea where to go. <laughs> yeah, so. Hey guys, we'll be playing catch up. Um, the turn to San Ignacio is on the right in like five kilometers, so don't miss it. So, oh joy, that's fun. We are trying to catch up with our caravan, so that San Ignacio checkpoint is literally just a mile outside of town. Um, after you get through that, you come up on San Ignacio, beautiful oasis town, um, and you have to make a right turn um, to get into it. Um, there are also quite a few campgrounds you can stay at. We are staying at El Padrino RV Park for tonight. They offer um, electric and water hookups at each site, and then they have a dump station and the campground that you can dump at before leaving or after you arrive. And that campground is literally, I mean, you're within walking distance of town. Um, such such a cute, one of my favorite, favorite towns in Baja. So we'll be showing you around here in a little bit. We are almost there. There they are. Okay, perfect. I see you guys. We're coming up behind you right now. All right. So yes, we, uh, our caravan got ahead of us and We're going to be making this right hand turn towards San Ignacio on the sign. There they are. There's our caravan. So they were able to pull over before our turn. Our turn off is right here. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> Great work team. That was fun. <laughs> but we got them back. We are walking around downtown San Ignacio and I love this quaint little colonial town. It is so beautiful and just quiet and serene and 
it's just such a cool little place. Um, it was, the Jesuits came here in 1706 and then built this beautiful mission here behind me in 1726. This is also a great place to stop and spend the night as you are making your way south down the one. It's a great little quick stopover. I highly recommend it. Um, it is a beautiful oasis town. There is a river that runs through it and just, it's full of lush, beautiful date palms. Um, there are several different campgrounds you can choose from. Um, a couple of them have um, no hookups, so it's just boondocking or dry camping. And then there are a couple that have um, electric and water hookups and a dump station on site. Um, two of them are within walking distance of town. Um, actually, probably three of them are within walking distance of town. The other one is, is just off Highway 1 and it's probably best to drive into town if you stay it. Um, that's rice and beans. The town is built on a square and the square is a really cute, a really cute spot um, where kids like to come and hang out and play. We've played soccer with the local kids here. Um, right now there's a little girl riding around on her scooter and then surrounding the square on one side is the old mission and then on the other sides are a bunch of cute little restaurants. <laughs> San Ignacio is also another great place to come and see the gray whales. You can stay and camp at one of the campgrounds here and book a tour and um, I'm not sure how many miles down but it's a really rough dirt road to get to the lagoon but you can book a tour and they will actually come pick you up here in San Ignacio town and drive you out to the lagoon and then you can go on your whale watching trip or you can try and drive your rig out on the washboard dirt road to get the lagoon. There are a lot of um, different eco camps that you can boondock at um, or you can book a room or a tent or all different kinds of things. It is another um, again, great place to also see the gray whales here. Sadly, our time at San Ignacio has come to an end. What a cute, cute little town. Um, always love San Ignacio. Always sad to leave there. Um, but, but it's time to move on. And um, on our road trip itinerary, we've been basically staying one night in each spot as we head south. But now our next spot, we are going to be staying for a total of three nights so excited we finally get to slow down now that we've um, made it to the southern part of um, Baja of the Baja Peninsula um, we are going to be uh, camping on a beautiful beach along the Bay of Conception just south of Mulahe so now we get to camp on San Espac Beach there are also several other beaches that you can camp on um, San Espac is the largest and the most popular, it is big rig friendly. Um, there are two different restaurants on the beach and um, it's very easy to get to. And um, there's always plenty of room to camp. You're almost always gonna be able to find a spot. And um, it's just, oh, it's a beautiful, beautiful beach. So that's where we're gonna be for the next um, three nights. Now it's time to leave um, San Ignacio and we have about a two hour drive. Uh, it's not too far, um, but it can be a little bit of a doozy because we have two pretty big road grades that we have to drive through, through the mountains, um, just to get to Santa Rosalia, which is the town that's just north of Mulahe. So those road grades, there is one short one, um, that's called the Tres Virginis grade. It's right next to, um, there's three volcanoes and the grade just goes along that. And it's just for a couple of miles, um, not too hard to do. Um, we've had more issues heading north on that grade than we have heading south. Um, but it is, if you're heading south, it is a downward grade and then the second grade is more of a doozy and it's called the devil's grade or the road to hell is what um, it translates to 
Um, and that one can be a little bit of a doozy. It's longer than the Trace Virginis grade, and so we take it nice and slow in first gear. Um, and it is a few miles long for that one, and then that drops you right down into the town of Santa Rosalia. Puppies, we're almost to the beach. Yes. We're almost to the beach. Yes. We're almost to the beach. The beach. The beach. Are you ready for the beach? I think they're ready. Taco Tuesday time. Well, it's leaving time and any time we have to leave the beach is uh, not a good time, but we are leaving to go to another great place, Loretto, just about an hour and a half south of here on the Bay of Conception. Loretto is a nice coastal town, very, very popular. It's got an uh, international airport, lots of expats like to hang out there. Beautiful downtown area. Anyway, gonna stop talking about that. And now we gotta finish packing up so we can go ahead and hook up our car and start the drive south with our people. Today is errand day while we are in Loretto, and I uh, just washed my hair, my weekly hair wash. So we have full of hookups here, and that is so nice when you have full hookups um, in Baja. And we also have laundry on site, so we are going to get our laundry done. 
and then we also need um, water refills and hmm not sure what else but yep errand day always a fun one and I will show you uh, what the amenities are like in some of the RV parks here in Baja getting safe drinking water in Baja is super easy to do Agua purificados are plentiful and all over the peninsula and that is where we always stop to get our drinking water. We carry with us a five gallon water container and that is all that we drink out of. We do not drink out of the water in our water tank in our RV. We solely um, take that five gallon jug to get filled up at these Aguas purificados. You can also get your water tank filled up at some of these Aguas Purificados, but we don't do that anymore because we just don't, we don't drink the water from our water tank. We only use that for showering and washing dishes. So what we do is we just normally fill up our water tank at a campground and then add a little bit of bleach or you can add a little bit of vinegar. But these Agua, Agua Purificados are everywhere super easy to find and the water is cheap we literally we pay like 20 pesos for them to fill up our five gallon jug it is super affordable and um yeah the only way really to get really great drinking water here in baja laundry facilities can be hit or miss in baja um, most rv parks that you stay at will not have laundry facilities on site like they do in the u.s um, but there are a couple that you will find that will have like a washer and dryer or just a washing machine and then you hang your clothes up to dry. Sometimes dryers are, our self-serve dryers are hard to find here. Um, so in Loreto, the RV park that we are staying at, they do have laundry facilities on the site. They have about four or five washing machines and two dryers and it costs about 50 pesos um, per load of laundry in the washer or the dryer. But one of the things that Baja is known for are their lavanderias, which is basically a laundry service where you drop your clothes off and then they wash, dry, and fold them for you. So the lavanderias are very nice if you just want to drop off your clothes and forget about it and not have to do your own laundry. They do an excellent job washing your clothes here the laundry smells amazing when you get it back and it's super affordable as, as well so when we stay at a campground that has the self-service laundry stations we usually just do our own laundry so we are currently camped at riviera del mar in loreto um, it is a decent mexican campground um, the owner Yolanda is super nice. I mean, she speaks perfectly good English. You can make reservations to camp here, which in Mexico and Baja, usually most RV parks, it's very hard to make reservations at. But this is one of those that you probably will be able to. You can call or you can send Yolanda an email um, and make those reservations. It is small. Most of the sites here are very tight. In fact, you should expect that pretty much at every campground in Baja. They are not like in the U.S., okay? They don't take into consideration that most RVs have slide-outs. Um, the spaces are very tight in basically all the campgrounds that we've stayed at. It's just, it's just the way it is in Mexico, okay? They basically treat it as like a parking space. And basically, if you want to hang out outside your RV, you're doing it in front of the RV or behind the RV. Um, and you're getting to know your neighbor really well, which I don't mind. I like people. I like meeting new people. And so that's what we do when we stay at a campground in uh, Baja. And currently on our caravan, we're spending most of our time with our caravan people. And we're setting out our table in front of our RVs and hanging out that way anyways. So, but that is something you should know. Keep your expectations low. If you're coming here in an RV to Baja, you are not going to get American type amenities at the campgrounds here, okay? Um, the spaces are gonna be small. It's gonna be tight. 
You're going to be close to everyone. Do not expect 50 amp hookups. Don't even expect 30 amp hookups. Most of the hookups here are going to be 15 amp or 20 amps. Um, sometimes you can't fully rely on the electricity here. Um, there's some RV parks that we trust to plug in at and there's some that we don't trust at all and we don't plug in. Um, don't expect full hookups. Most RV parks do not have sewer at each individual site. Some do. The one that we're currently at, Riviera del Mar, we have full hookups. We have a dump at site. We have water. We have electricity. Even though the electricity is only 15 amp, you should expect that when camping in Baja at a campground. Um, most RV parks, if, if you're coming here and you expect to have a full hookup with a beachfront view, you're not going to find that. The only places you're going to find that are in San Felipe and in Los Barillas. And you're probably not going to be beachfront. You're going to be in a campground that's near or on the beach within, you know, a short walking distance, like a few steps. Um, but don't expect that. Don't expect to have a full hookup on the beach, okay? Most on the beach camping is going to be boondocking or dry camping. You're not going to have electric. So you're going to want to be prepared for that. If you're coming down here for a long time, make sure you have some sort of solar panel, either portable or connected on your roof on your rig. Um, make sure you have a decent enough battery bank for, for what you need to run in your RV when you don't have an electric hookup. And so that's just some of the things to expect. Um, you're not going to have like most campgrounds here don't have pools. There are some that have pools and that's really nice and you're probably going to pay more for that, but most aren't going to have a pool. Um, there will be some most will have showers not all of them will have hot water um, most will have hot water um, most will be like you're going to be taking a military shower in those because their hot water heaters are very small um, the water pressure is not going to be great that's one thing i've noticed even at a campsite with the water connection we never um we never connect our water regulator because the water here is, um, the water pressure here is very hit or miss. It's never so strong that you need that regulator. And if you do put that regulator on, the water is going to come out like a trickle. So we don't even connect our water regulator. Sometimes we connect, you know, like our inline water filter. But a lot of times I've noticed that that makes the water pressure not very good either. So a lot of times we go without connecting that filter. Also, don't expect level RV sites. There are a lot of campgrounds, they just, they don't take that in consideration that you need to be perfectly level um, for your RV fridges, for your slide outs. So don't expect that, okay? You're going to come into most campsites here and you're going to have to level your rig with leveling blocks. So make sure you bring that equipment with you, either wood or your plastic leveling blocks. Um, we've stayed at campgrounds in San Felipe where we're paying like 40 45 dollars a night because the camp the campground is on the beach and you know we got decent amenities but the sites are not level at all which is frustrating but and again we are in mexico Had a delicious breakfast at Pan K Pan. 
<laughs> we both got the machaca omelet. It was delicious. And then some music showed up. A nice guy on a ukulele. And then we went to the supermercado and got some fresh strawberries. Yeah, you bought the strawberries from the kid. Yeah, we bought them from a super nice kid um, out front of the supermarket. Uh, he was so sweet. And look at these strawberries. Yeah. <laughs> nice way to start the morning here in Loretto. Huh, Huckleberry? You met some doggy friends too? This is a marquesitas. It's very similar to a crepe. And we came by this marquesitas truck um, last time we were in Loretto, but they were so busy that we decided not to get one. Um, but these are so worth the wait. This is so good. So what's in it? Mine has raspberries and cream cheese. And I ordered one for Chris, it's strawberries, Nutella, cream cheese, and then they added raspberries. Amazing. It's a sweet tooth. We've had such an amazing time here in Loretto. We've been here for three days, and man, we have, we have eaten so much food. I feel like whenever we come here, there's always new restaurants that we have to try and that's exactly what we did and it was great and we visited some that we've liked or that we've already been to in the past um but just sharing loretto with our caravan has been so much fun um they've had a great time as well they went on a uh, snorkeling trip and to a beach and we had another guy that went diving and he got to see humpback whales and just all sorts of cool stuff uh, Chris and I we we spent like two days working um, and then just eating some really good food that we got to try um, been always always a good time here in Loretto but now it is time for us to leave um, we have a long drive day to get to La Paz. It's about four to five hours. We have um, quite a few body breaks that we're going to take for our caravan and a fuel up. Um, we have to drive through what we call Stop Sign City, which is Ciudad Constitution. That's always fun. Um, yeah, so many stop signs that we have to stop at when we go through there. Um, but it is almost leaving time because we have a long drive day. We are leaving here early. Um, we need to leave like around 8.30 and I think it's about 8 o'clock now. So I need to pack up. We, uh, we spread up. We spread out while we are here. Um, yeah, so I need to get the camp inside of the camper ready while Chris gets the outside ready. And then it's go time.
pretty good donut. to call those party cows. <laughs> they like to party. <laughs> yeah, so livestock is, is free range in Baja. And one of the number one rules of Baja is you do not drive at night. And it's not because it's dangerous. Oh, it's Mexico, you're gonna get robbed, blah, 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 if you drive at night. It's not because of that. It's because of the livestock. They are free range and they love to come near the roads when it starts to get dark out. I mean, we even see them during the day, but especially in the evenings, they really like to hang out near the roads. Um, and it's just dangerous if you're driving at night. It's pitch black out here. There's no street lamps. There's no lights around here. It is pitch black. And if you hit a, a huge cow, now there's a semi, semi truck in the road. <laughs> Yikes. That's an, yeah. <laughs> that was scary. <laughs> Semi truck in the road coming right at us, coming right wide around that blind turn. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> you do not want to hit a 2,000 pound animal at any speeds on these roads at night. So that is one of the number one rules of Baja. Do not drive at night. Because we had such a long drive day yesterday from Loreto to La Paz, we just spent a quick night at Campestre Marinata. That's a campground that's just outside of La Paz. And today we are driving to one of the most beautiful beaches in uh, Baja California Sur, and that is Tecalote Beach. We are gonna be there for the next uh, two nights. Um, it is so pretty there. It is definitely one of our favorites. It is a free beach. Um, so there are no, uh, basically no, I wanna say facilities. There are no toilets. There are no, they have trash cans, but there's no formal trash pickup. So I always tell everyone that is deciding to camp out at Tecolote Beach for free, that your RV be self-contained. So that means that you have a toilet and a black tank or a composting toilet and your rig so you're not going out and anyways digging a hole to use the bathroom out on this beautiful beach and that because there is no really formal trash pickup there's no one that is paid money to pick up the trash there that you basically pack out your trash do not fill up the trash cans the very few trash cans that there are on this beach they are for the mexicans to use and so i just want to be very adamant about that if you do decide to camp out on this beautiful beach that you treat it like you're boondocking because you are but you treat it like you're camping on BLM land where there are no services, there's no trash. You need to pack, pack in and pack out everything that you bring to this beach. So we can keep it beautiful and clean. We are going there for two days. It's always uh, one of our favorite places. Um, one of, definitely our, one of our favorite beaches to camp on. Um, it's so serene and so pretty. Um, and then after that, we move on to uh, Los Barillas. But today, it's beach time. So we have arrived here at Tecalote and it is windy. Um, and it's supposedly gonna be windy for the next couple of days, but that's the usual, that is the norm here at Tecalote. It is um, not a protected beach, it is wide open, but it is beautiful here. Um, and it's a very popular beach because of the beauty and because it's free. Um, so we are trying to get everyone situated and find a good camping spot. And we're trying to keep everyone as close together as we possibly can. 
Um, so we're just figuring that out right now and then we're gonna get set up and enjoy the beach for the rest of the day. It is a beautiful, sunny, but windy day here on Tecolote Beach. I think it's a great time to play some bocce ball. This is what to expect when you camp on a free Mexican beach on the weekend. So Sunday is fun day for the Mexicans here and they will pack out the beaches. They would come out here in droves, pack out the beaches, blast music, and they will play the music all night long until the wee hours of the morning. So if you expect to come out here um, in your RV, and camp for free for weeks on end or for however long you plan to be out here. Don't expect peace and quiet all the time. You are gonna have Mexicans, locals show up and probably blast music right by your RV. It's happened to us several times. It's happened to other people. I've heard countless stories. Um, it's just what to expect out here. And, um, Today is not only a Sunday while we're out here on Tecolo Day, it's also a holiday weekend and the locals are coming in like mad. This, this beach is packed. It is packed. As you can see, all the partiers have uh, cleared the beach. <laughs> but I'm here. <laughs> but we're still here. I like to, I like to party. I was uh, afraid oh, that we were like. not. <laughs> you like to party? I like to party. <laughs> Why didn't you go party with the... I was, I, the was, locals. I was there. You were there? I was there. I learned to play the tuba. You learned to play the tuba? They taught me how to play the tuba. You need to show that on our YouTube. No, 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 no. It's a personal thing. <laughs> it's a personal thing. Yeah, it's just, you gotta have some personal space for your own self. Oh. The tuba is my personal space. So, <laughs> we, I turned the fan on, on, uh, basically full blast last night just so we didn't hear that music and it worked I think we both I slept really good did you sleep good yep yeah so we both slept really good last night even though um, the locals are out here blasting music all night long I don't know until what time usually they blast it until the wee hours in the morning but today's a holiday so good for it them. is Today is a holiday. It is uh, Benito, Benito? Benito Juarez. Benito Juarez's birthday. So, um, something and, uh, like that. Oh. Something. Uh, so, the locals are having a good old time last night, which is fine. This is their beach, and um, we get to stay here for free. Glad, you know, we are, uh, we are very um, appreciative of that. So, and we share the beach. It's also so. um, the day that oil was nationalized. In Mexico. Oh. Yep. Uh -huh. So two know. holidays. Ready to start planning your Baja camping adventure but not sure where to begin? Purchase our guidebook through the link below and learn everything you need to know to plan the journey of a lifetime. We cover everything from what you need to know to prepare for the trip, to what to expect while traveling, as well as helpful tips and insights into what to do and where to stay. This book will give you the confidence to explore Baja, whether you join one of our caravans or not. True to form, Playa Tecolote does not disappoint when you get a beautiful day which is the day that we're leaving. Sadly, we had two windy days here, so we weren't able to fully enjoy what Playa Tecolote has to offer, except of course, just absolute beauty all around, from the mountains behind to the water that's all kinds of different colors, the 
the island off the coast, the Spiritu Santo, and the sandy beach. I mean, it's just, it is a beautiful, beautiful place. And we were glad we got two days here. Unfortunately, those two days were windy, um, but when Tecolote is on, it is on. And this morning, it is on. Today's gonna be a beautiful day here at Playa Tecolote. We are gonna be headed to Los Barillas with a quick stop in El Triunfo on the way. Really cool little town that will uh, We'll show how much we enjoy our stop there in El Triunfo. Um, but off to a beautiful day today here in La Paz at Playa Tecolote. Wish we could stay another week, but we're carrying on. This is a quick itinerary and, uh, you know, that's the beautiful thing about Baja. You come down here and you find the places that you love and then you decide you want to spend a little bit more time there rather than uh, continuing to run around or come back and run around and run around and run around because there's so much here to see and so much to do and so many new places things that we're learning as we're traveling places that we've never been before um, experiences that we're having that are just something new and that's the beauty of Baja is being here and getting to explore and enjoy what we love the people the culture the landscapes and the wildlife here in this beautiful peninsula and of course the food gotta add that in there which is part of the culture but this place is beautiful and it's always a sad day leaving the beach but we're gonna leave from one beach and go to the next just a short little hop away there's some parking on both the right and the left where i am right here vans and truck campers can probably come up maybe trailers drop off back there I'm swinging into the left over here. Bus is leaving. This guy's gonna have to wait for me to Is the CRE off the road? He, no, not yet. Keep going. We just arrived in the beautiful town of El Triunfo. It is absolutely one of my favorite little towns in Baja, California, sir. It is an old mining town. Um, very small, very quaint, very cute. Um, there is an amazing cafe here um, that we are gonna stop and get brunch at. Um, they have the best pastries, <laughs> some of the best pastries I've ever eaten. Um, they also bake fresh bread. Um, they supposedly make really good pizzas. Haven't tried them, but I heard that they're fantastic. And look at these little cool, cute buildings. I just love it. I love this town. Um, I love old colonial style buildings and this town is just full of it. There's also some really great museums here. There's several. There's like a music museum, a mining museum, and there is a Vaquero Museum, which is a Mexican cowboy that I really want to go to. Maybe I'll check it out today. We'll see if we have time. Um, but just to cute little town to stop in um plenty of parking for rvs and the town is just everyone's so friendly here oh and i can't wait i can't wait to get my almond croissant at uh the cafe here and el triunfo is nestled in the sierra de la laguna mountain range in baja california sur we're almost at the southern tip of the peninsula here but it this is nestled in the mountains I don't know, I don't think it's an oasis town, um, but just a cute little mining town in the middle of the mountains and a beautiful scenic drive in here. And then to get down to the East Cape, you drive through the mountain, over and through the mountain range um, to get over to Los Barillas, which is on the Sea of Cortez. But definitely a beautiful drive in here. It's right off the Highway 1, and it is a must stop if you are on your way to Los Barillas. Yeah. 
la tierra mi cuerpo entero los ríos son como brazos la tierra mi cuerpo entero las aves platican we made it into the campground at Los Perillas. We are staying at Baja Sunrise, which is just to the south of town. And uh, we thought it'd be fun for everybody to be able to get around on their own without having to carpool in our CRV. We all went out and we rented ATVs. So we got quads and side-by-sides. We're gonna go have a blast, starting with happy hour right now because this group loves happy hour. And that's one of the things that we love about the caravans is just the fact that we get to spend time together just hanging out whether you're drinking or not drinking, happy hours is a fun time to be happy, and Baja's a great place for that. He's always a spaz Come when we on. get home. Come on, go bottom. Go bottom. <laughs> yeah, I see you, boy. Yeah, I see you. Let's go for a ride up the coast. We're gonna go along the beach, down where we were last night after happy hour, where all the campers are, and we're gonna turn up the arroyo there to the main road. Take, take it for a little while before we go off on a dirt road. We're gonna go fast, really fast. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if Elaine's gonna like that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I could stay here for a while. Hey, sexy. 
This place is beautiful. <laughs> I mean, you're beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Don't want to leave this spot at all, but it's time for lunch. What a day. <laughs> we are now back in the RV park, safe and sound. Um, and we are going to have our happy hour. This is one of our, what we call a hosted happy hour, where Chris and I provide all the drinks and uh, beer and wine and some munchies. And we just hang out. Um, we have a couple of those on our caravan. We also have a couple of um, hosted dinners where we take everyone out to a dinner and we pay for it um, and we just have a good time and hang out and we've honestly we've been having happy hours almost every night it's just everyone pays out of their own pocket for that but this group has been so amazing and so much fun to be around um, that we've literally been having happy hour every day <laughs> since we've started our caravan. And that's one thing you can expect uh, if you do decide to go on a caravan with us. It is our last morning here in Los Barillas and we're gonna go enjoy coffee by the ocean. Any whales? No, no but we've no. seen some stingrays. Oh, cool. Well, I, I can't confirm a whale, I see that. Looks like a spout way out there, but. Uh, yeah. Ocean views. Well, it's time to leave the beach. And unfortunately, and kind of sad, we don't have another beach day um, until we get to Bay of LA. So we have, um, we are leaving Los Perales and we are going back to La Paz and we are going to enjoy city life for the next three days. Been here for three days. Had a wonderful time here in Los Barillas. Um, sometimes it's like I have like a love-hate relationship or me and Chris, we both do in Los Barillas. It's kind of, um, it's such a beautiful area. The East Cape is absolutely, takes your breath away. It is just amazingly beautiful. But we call it Gringo Town. It is Gringo Town. It's Gringo Takeover here in the winter. Um, it's just not a real Mexican Baja kind of town um, because of that and while it's nice it's it's just absolutely beautiful and it's comfortable and they have everything here it just doesn't have that Mexican vibe um, that me and Chris both really like but you might like it here most people that come here this is their favorite stop and it because of just the beauty I mean it's just the beach is amazing uh, just everything here is amazing the weather all of that so um, you might fall in love with those perillas when you come down here but all good things must come to an end and we have to move on to La Paz and start making our sad trek north again well, we've made it back to beautiful La Paz we're gonna be here for three days and uh, we first got in ran a couple errands everybody got to peel off and go to their favorite big box store buy some groceries, and then we went out to dinner last night, walked the Malacan. That's one of our favorite things to do in La Paz, whether it's just Lindsay and I or whether we got a whole group that we're leading. So 
started out great and now we are up in the morning and out for whale sharks. We've got a group of people going to go swim with the whale sharks and that's going to be fantastic. It is one of the reasons why people come to La Paz, particularly in the winter. It's one of the things that you can do while you're here in La Paz and it's definitely, definitely worth booking a trip to go and do because it's a very unique experience. Lynn's going to show you more about that. Hey, there's hey. whale sharks. <gasps> whale sharks? Whale sharks. Yes, whale sharks. <laughs> Today we are taking a day trip to Todos Santos. Todos Santos, it, it is such a cute, artsy town that you must visit while you're here in Baja California Sur. There's not a lot of camping in the area, um, therefore we are day tripping in our car um, from La Paz. It's about an hour drive, so not too bad. So we're gonna go there and walk around, spend the day looking at the cute little shops and um, there is some camping, so there is one campground in Toto Santos, but we really don't recommend camping there. Um, it's just kind of, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> it's, not, it's not well maintained. It's just not a well maintained campground. Um, but there is some camping just a little further south of Toto Santos in a little town called Cerritos. There's a couple little boutique. Um, campgrounds, they're small, they're cute, and you might be able to find a spot camping there. But it was much easier for us just to camp at Campestre, Miranatha, and La Paz, and then day trip out to Todos. So we're going to go spend a couple hours there, check out some sites. Um, yeah, and just we haven't spent a lot of time in Todos, so I'm kind of excited to walk around and uh, see everything again. I feel like we haven't walked in town there since probably 2019 to 2020.
puppies are heading north. This is it. Sad day. I always hate heading north. We are now officially heading north and it is a sad, sad day. I, I always hate leaving La Paz. I love La Paz so much. It is definitely my favorite city in all of Baja. Um, and we had such a great time too. We got to do the whale sharks. Um, we day tripped to Todos Santos. We had a great meal in town and hung out on the Malacan. Um, just an amazing time. Um, but man, we have less than 10 days left on this caravan and ah, I love these people that we are traveling with so, so, so much. Um, they are all amazing. I've had such a great time, but it's definitely a uh, bittersweet for sure. Um, we are making the long trek north from La Paz to Loreto. It is about a five to six hour drive with our stops. Um, we basically take a body break every hour and we're also going to need to do a fuel up. We are now pulled off on the side of the road. Um, we think maybe one of our caravan people had a mirror hit, um, which unfortunately that is a common occurrence uh, in Baja. The roads are so narrow that when a truck is oncoming or another RV is oncoming, um, sometimes the mirrors brush. I'm hoping that's not what happened but uh, we'll find out here in a minute. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna unhook the car and come back to you. Uh, okay, all right, bye. So, the semi that went by apparently hit the trailer and ripped part of the awning off no. and so now they're exchanging information and wow all and of that <laughs> so we gotta unhook the car i gotta go uh i gotta go back there yep wow after i said that um hardly anyone ever makes contact with the body that just happened wow that's nuts. We are safely pulled over on this little pull out here on the side of the road. Um, Chris is unhooking the car and yeah, he's going to take the car, turn around then uh, go back to where the rest of our caravan is. We have one of them behind us that pulled over behind us. Um, I think we're all safely pulled over on the side of the road and this is probably going to be a long delay. Um, hopefully we're not arriving at dark. And now we wait. Um, I'm just gonna hang out here in the RV while Chris figures out the situation. He didn't want to take the camera. Oh, I just hope there's no damage done to the actual RV and it's just the awning. This is this sucks. Um, yeah, but they should be able they should be able to get this figured out and get it covered under insurance. Um, Speaking of insurance, that is a must-have um, when you come, when you bring your RV or any vehicle down to Baja, you have to get Mexican insurance. Um, your insurance in the States or Canada is not going to cover any accidents like this that happen down here. Um, yeah, it's a must, must, must have to get Mexican insurance. We always go with Baja Bound, great company. Um, but that's who we use, uh, great customer service. The way insurance uh, works down here, basically Baja Bound is a broker. Um, and there's like two or three different insurance companies here in Baja. Um, usually when we go through Baja Bound, we get Chubb Insurance. Um, that's one of the major ones. So basically you find an insurance broker um, and then they find you the best rates uh, with an insurance company down here in Mexico. So Baja Bound is a great one. Usually you end up with the Chubb insurance policy. We always get six months to our year policy, even though we're not here that full time, it's just cheaper that way. Um, the longer the policy and the cheaper it is. Um, so we always get six months or more. You know, I didn't think of this, but I sure hope that I don't know whose fault this is. We might have to wait for police, just depending on how things are going right now. I don't know if we're gonna have to wait for police on this if that happens, 
basically what we're going to have to do is Chris is going to have to continue on in the RV and I'm probably going to have to stay behind in the car. Uh, I'm hoping it doesn't come to that. I'll find out soon. Um, I'm sure we have, fortunately we have cell service in this part. Um, that's hit or miss in Baja. There are uh, stretches of the highway or stretches of Baja where there is no cell phone service uh, whatsoever. Um, so I'm very glad right now that we do have cell phone service so Chris can call me once he figures out what is going on just in case um, I do have to stay behind. Thankfully we have a car for that. Okay, what's that? We are getting the police and the insurance adjuster to come out here. Okay, I figured. So it's going to it's going to be a little while. Okay. So, do what I... are your thoughts on sending everyone in? That was that was what I was gonna say. I was gonna say you probably need to either continue on or we stay in La Paz tonight. All right. So it sounds like <laughs> we're gonna be sitting here waiting for the insurance adjuster. Looking on the bright side, we are only about 30 minutes, maybe an hour outside of La Paz, which is one of the biggest cities. It's the capital of Baja California Sur. So I'm hoping that because we're so close to La Paz, it will not take the insurance adjuster long to get here, but I'm not holding my breath. So our friends, our caravan members, they are safe. Everything's okay. Um, the awning, the back of the awning did get hit and a little part of the trailer um, has some damage to it. Not bad. It's definitely repairable um, and we could definitely keep driving on but we are still waiting for the insurance adjuster to come out um, and we were able to uh, secure the awning um, so that it's not flapping around and hanging and, and unsafe. Um, so we're good to go. Once the insurance adjuster gets here and we figure things out, um, we will be on the way to Loreto. Um, one thing to know if something like this does happen to you, 078 is the number to call. Um, Chris called that number. 078, he got an English speaking operator, right? And they yep. were able to send help. Um, a national, it was a National Guard officer, well, right? No, they. They didn't call the National Guard. They just talk you through what to do and figure out where you are and try to make sure that you're safe and feel comfortable. Fortunately, we had cell service, one bar of cell service, but it worked well enough to be able to make a phone call and relay our GPS coordinates. So I haven't seen Green Angels yet, but that's the next step is Green Angels should be coming through sometime soon. And they would normally be the highway patrol not patrol, but um, not, not in a law enforcement sense, but patrolling the highway for incidents like this. Um, and they're bilingual as well, so they can help you um, in this circumstance. But call 911 after calling 078. Um, first, everybody was okay. If it was the other way around, if people were, were injured, definitely would have called 911 first. But um, the driver of the vehicle that they hit or that hit them is uh, Spanish speaking couldn't understand him. My Spanish is only so good. So I called 078, got an English speaking person and handed my phone over on speakerphone. So he was able to relay the information to the driver and, and the driver could relay information to me. Um, so that was very, very helpful. Then of course called 911 to get the police to come out here. And at the same time as I was talking to 911, um, our campers had called their insurance company and the adjuster is on their way out. So all that happened simultaneously. Obviously, first thing, make sure everybody is okay. Everybody was was okay. We needed the help. If you speak fluent Spanish, then that's fine. But uh, we needed the help, so we called the tourist hotline 078, and then called 911, um, and that's where we are now, just waiting, waiting for the adjuster. So one other piece of the story is that the damage wasn't catastrophic to the truck driver. His windshield side view mirror was was broken but not crazy it didn't smash through the windshield or nothing crazy happened so he was asking for 2000 pesos which is just over a hundred dollars and honestly that's a reasonable price to fix up a mirror but the proper thing to do is not to pay him the proper thing to do is to do what we've done which is to call insurance call the police and have it settled that way 
um, even though it was a fair price and, and the person that we spoke to at the tourist hotline said the same thing, said the proper thing to do is call the police and call the insurance company. Said, but this guy will take 2,000 pesos and he'll be on his way if you want to do that. So those are the options, just like paying any bribe. This isn't necessarily a bribe. It would have, you know, $100 to fix the windshield is, or the wind, wind mirror is fine. But then what about their camper? You know what I mean? Well, if you do that, then it's basically saying... No. If, if this driver hadn't stopped, if the truck driver hadn't stopped, our guest would still have the broken awning and would still have the hole in their trailer. So the insurance claim would still be filed. You can always file the insurance claim before you leave Mexico. So they, we could have got to Loretto. We could have settled in. They could have had a drink in their hand and called the insurance company and said that the truck hit them and continued to drive because that, that happens more often than not is that somebody keeps on driving, especially if you're headed in two different directions and you, you hit each other on the, on the passing. Um, but in this case, the driver pulled over and stopped, which was great, but the driver was just willing to take the pesos in hand and, and continue on. Our guess would still have been okay if they filed the claim from Loretto because it would have just been that the driver hit them and continued on. And that happens, that's why you have uninsured motorist insurance, because that happens in the United States and Canada regularly where accidents are hit and runs and they take off. So that, that's what would have happened. But that is something to say the right thing to do, even if you're in a hurry, is call the police, call the insurance. Never, ever, 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 ever travel in Baja, Mexico or anywhere in Mexico. Never drive a vehicle without insurance. We go with Baja bound insurance 100% of the time. Um, but never do that because that will get you in trouble like this. If our guests didn't have insurance and they stopped and waited for the police, they'd probably be going to jail right now. So um, just make sure that you have that covered. What an adventure that was. Well, the accident happened, I think, just before 10 a.m. It is now 2 o'clock. So it took over two hours for the insurance adjuster um, to arrive at the scene of the accident. And of course, now we're behind that same truck. <laughs> the truck we had the, ac that we had the accident with, we're now behind him and he's driving slow. So. <laughs> Is it that truck? Yes, it's that truck. Um, yeah. So we'll see. I, I, honestly, after that incident, I'm, I'm not ready to pass anyone ever again. <laughs> At least not that guy, because I mean he did nothing, nothing to make it easy um, for our caravan to get around. He stayed on the yellow line. He did not hug the you know the right side of the road while we were passing. He did not slow down um, when Russ tried to get over. And yeah, so just a nightmare, but at least everyone's safe. You know, it happened where we had cell service. Even if we didn't have cell service, we have Starlink. So we could have, you know, thrown out the Starlink and gotten service that way. But uh, still got it all handled. And um, insurance adjuster finally came out and thankfully he spoke some English. Um, so we are able to figure things out and get everything taken care of and the insurance knows about it and the trailer there's no way for them to repair RVs down here in Mexico so the work so basically they will have to go to the US which they're gonna do anyways on the way back to Canada and um, find a repair shop that can that can do the work and then get the estimate for what it's going to cost to get everything fixed and then they send that estimate to the insurance and then the insurance will cover the cost um, plus they have to pay the uh, deductible so um, but at least you know that that is going to be covered they're going to need a new awning and some uh, fiberglass repair because there is a hole small hole in the side of the camper and maybe even a, um, the door is a little dented too from the mirror hitting it so and the only damage to the truck was the mirror I mean it, it the mirror actually looked in good shape it just was missing the glass so huh, um, definitely more damage to the RV but there was really no way to figure out whose fault it was they definitely passed in a safe 
a safe area. It was a dotted line. It was a straightaway. Um, they did everything right. It just, yeah, it happens. I don't even want to pass them. And I guess we're passing. Well, having said that, we just did. <laughs> Definitely him. Get back up on that horse. Ooh. And yeah, that was the guy with the accident, but we passed him. So the but the road was wider in that area. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyways, hey, yeah, and through these hills, the, the trucks just go a little too slow. And we need to make up some time because we might be pushing it coming into Loretto, but I think we're going to be okay. Plus, there's only two of us now and not seven. So, and the rest of our caravan is safely on the way to Loretto. They're halfway there. Um, they just contacted us. They just fueled up in Constitution, which is where we're going to stop and get fuel. And they're a little over halfway to Loretto. So. If you're interested in exploring Baja in your RV, but would rather worry about what flavor of margarita to enjoy instead of how to navigate the logistics of driving and camping, we invite you to join one of our caravans. Professional wagon masters like ourselves, with years of experience living and traveling in Baja, will lead you on an unforgettable adventure where you can relax more and enjoy traveling with others. Check out the link below to learn more and sign up for one of our unique caravan experiences. Well, today we are leaving Loretto and heading further north. Oh, bittersweet for sure. Um, we just have eight days left on our caravan and I'm going, I'm sad. I'm going to miss these people so much. Uh, and yeah, I really don't, I'm not ready to head north, but man, Loretto was great this time around. Um, we got in late because of our ordeal with the uh, semi-truck and the awning um, with one of our caravan members. So we got in late um, the other day and yeah, so we didn't really do a whole lot of sightseeing here again, but man, we ate at me, Loretto last night and it was amazing. I had so much fun. The drinks were great. The atmosphere was great. The food was spectacular. Um, if you, come to Loretto, definitely put me, Loretto, on your restaurant list to go to. It was great. The mole was delicious. I had the cochinita uh, puble, peeble. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's a pork dish. It was phenomenal. Uh, my goodness. It was um, definitely a restaurant that's a little more expensive than what we would normally go to, but it was worth it. Um, it was definitely worth the money. And uh, man, had a great time there. Um, but it is time to move on to Mulahay, and I'm excited that uh, is one of uh, Chris and I's favorite towns in Baja, California, sir. And we get to be tour guides for our group there. It's going to be fun. It is getting kind of hot here. It's starting to warm up. It's the end of March. Um, Semana Santa is currently going on. Um, that is a huge, huge holiday down here in uh, Baja and the locals just come out, pack out the beaches, and it's just one huge party, and they have a blast, and you really don't want to be on or near a beach at that time unless you want to party with the locals, um, which I'm sure, I'm sure it's a blast, and maybe, maybe one day we will uh, take part in that, um, but not this year. Oh, we just got into the campground at Mulahay, and uh, this is one of our favorite places to be. Lindsay and I stayed here for about three months, three or four months, a couple years back. After our first time down, we said Mulahay was the kind of town we'd want to try to live in, and so we did that the next time we came down, and we got to know Mulahay very, very well. So we're excited to be here. We are camped at Hotel Serenidad, small campground here, um, but there are other campgrounds in the Mulahay area, um, so plenty of room for people to come and visit. But uh, we're going to go and carpool into town and go show everybody all of our favorites from the lighthouse to an old hotel to the mission and some delicious, delicious food. So that's what we're going to be uh, doing here in Mulahay. It's just a quick stopover for us, just two days. 
And so we're gonna do all the highlights in this day. Just bought some sweet treats. Give me one. What are they? Dulce de leche empanage. Dolce de leche. I want one that's that you haven't bitten into yet. Give me my own. <laughs> mm. Thank you. Oh, look how cute. They're good? Yeah. They don't taste quite homemade, but they kind of have to be. Mm, they have to be. Yeah. Why would they not be? Well, sadly, we have left Bulahe and we are driving northbound. Oh, sad. We only have a few days, five days left in Baja. Um, and today we are making the drive from Bulahe to Guerrero Negro. Um, always, always sad leaving Bulahe. Always sad leaving Baja in general, but. Mulahe has our hearts. It's just a town that uh, that we love, and it's just such a beautiful, beautiful, cute Mexican town uh, with a lot of history. Definitely a must stop on your trip to Baja. It's, it's absolutely one of our favorite places here. Mulahe is also along the coast. It's just north of the mouth to the Bay of Conception, and at the end of town. There's a lighthouse, and that's where the river empties into the Sea of Cortez. Um, and we've spent a lot of time camping in that area too. Definitely must stop and see Mulahe. I think one of the reasons why I feel like Mulahe feels like home to me is because it's a river town, and I grew up in a river town, and so it just it just holds a special place in our hearts. Um, also. Our favorite, one of our favorite taco stands, if not our favorite taco stand in all of Baja is in Mulahe, and it is called Asadero Danny's. You must eat there and say hi to the owner. His name is Juan, such an amazing guy. Um, him and his wife run it, and phenomenal food, great tacos. Um, just have a conversation with him. He's such a nice guy, and uh, yeah, so definitely, when you come and visit Mulahe, you have to stop and spend a few days uh, wandering around the town and must see the Danny's. And now we are on our way to Guerrero Negro. We just have a quick night. Um, we are stopping at a campground called Mario's. It is a campground that is great for just an overnight. They have all pull through or mostly pull through sites. We just pull in for the night. We don't unhook the car and then we just pull out first thing in the morning. Um, they're mostly known um, for doing the whale trips 
and Pereira Negro and Ojo de Libre Lagoon. Um, so that's usually what people camp there for. It's right off the one, just like I said, easy, easy in and out there. Um, and a must stop there if you want an easy in and out to see the whales as well. Um, right now the whale season has come to an end, sadly, so we won't be doing a whale trip while we're in Guerrero Negro, but again, it's just a quick stop for us. Just one night there and then first thing tomorrow morning we are leaving to go to Bahia de Los Angeles. So we just stopped for our final body break and last fuel up before we get to Gran Negro. And we've hit a minor issue. Um, so with that trailer that um, hit the semi truck um, when we were leaving La Paz and going to Loretto has an issue. We don't know what the issue is yet, but it has an issue with one of its axles. And um, thankfully, we caught that issue in Loretto. Once we got to Loretto the, the following day, um, the owner of that trailer noticed something was off, that the tires looked a little weird. So we were able to get a um, tire repair guy out. He came out to the campground and said, yep, you these tires are um, wearing unevenly because of the axle. Let's go ahead and put two better tires on. I believe they were used but like new. And so he installed these um, newer used tires on that were in better shape. And it turns out now, or almost a Guaranago, it turns out there is a screw in one of those tires and it was uh, not looking good. Uh, it's low on air looks like it might have a little bit of dry rot. We thought maybe that was the issue, but we just caught that there's a screw in it. So now the guys are um, taking that tire off and putting on a spare. Thankfully, he does have a full size spare. So number one thing um, to know if you come down to Baja in your RV, bring a full size spare tire if not two full-size spare tires, um, especially if you have a trailer. Um, tr the correct size trailer tires, they are very hard to find in Baja. They're just not, trailers just aren't a big thing here. Um, there's not really, it's really super hard to find trailer, specifically trailer tires. Um, if you have a motorhome like us, like a Class C or a van, it's going to be much easier to find tires because you just put standard, basically. Um, just heavy duty, but standard type truck tires. And all the years that we've been on the road, we've never blown a tire. We've gotten flats, but we've never blown out a tire. And I don't ever want to blow out a tire. So we're going to keep it at that. We're always going to put oversized tires on our rig. So I highly suggest you bring a spare, full-size spare, if not two full-size spares with you when you come down here because the roads are rough and um, there are a lot of nails. We have never gotten a nail in a tire out here in Baja, but there's a lot of trash and debris around. Um, it can happen and it's happened, uh, yeah, it happened on our last caravan and now it's happened again. Always a terribly sad day when we pass the, the border between the southern state of Baja California Sur and the northern state of Baja California. It means we're headed north, which we've been doing for a couple days, but reality kicks in. We really love the southern state and there's so much beauty and so much adventure that we had. Um, so this is our last couple days and we are headed north. Another reason why today is not so pleasant is we're going to have about 25 kilometers of the worst potholes on the highway this year. Um, maybe next year they'll be different, but we've got that terrible stretch of road coming up that none of us are looking forward to. I actually thought about not telling the group and uh, just getting through it and be at the end of it saying, hey guys, uh, that was the worst part of the road. And I joked about it and everybody's like, oh no, Chris, we already knew this day was coming that we were gonna be going through this stretch of highway. So not looking forward to it, but there's the Bay of LA at the end of the rainbow. 
So once we get through it, we'll end up at the Bay of Los Angeles. It's a beautiful, beautiful drive out there. Um, you can turn off of the one and go for about an hour and I look forward to spending a couple days in the Bay of Los Angeles. We are currently driving through the bad section of Highway 1. Oh, I don't even a, think that we've reached the really this, bad this section. This isn't even the bad section. This isn't even the really bad section. And we've already, our, half of our caravan is already like way behind us right now just because, just, yeah, it's not fun. It's, especially when you're in the motorhome and everything is rattling, everything. Right now we're in a section where we can dodge the potholes but there are literally sections where you can't dodge the potholes. It's like the whole first layer of the road is gone and you just hit it and it's just like shatters your entire brain. If you love Bob California Sur the way that we do, you'll put up with the terrible roads it takes to get down here. How many times did we do it this year, babe? We've done it, I think literally four, four times. <laughs> ah! And we've, we've paid for it because we've, we've replaced the axle seals on our RV. We've replaced the pinion seal again, but that was an ongoing issue, which I hope, I think we fixed now. <laughs> and the ball joints. And the ball joints. Um, yeah, it's been a fun season of repairs on our motorhome. Really have to love Baja. Like really love Baja. Or we you do. just have to be crazy. Or you just have to be crazy. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. I think it's worth it. Some people probably don't think it's worth it, but I think it's worth it. So we don't want to go too slow because at that point you can look into the pothole and it's like staring at the face of hell. So do be careful not to go too slow that you see the face of hell in this road. Also, <laughs> on this break, go grab something to put between your teeth. Something soft to bite down on because, um, yeah, you're gonna rattle a lot coming up. Diversion. Is there a road on the other side of this or am I going to drive off? I know, right? This is where I'm like, so this was not finished when we were here in January. They built this fast. They built this really fast. Like we were down there and now we are driving on the new bridge. I did not think that they would have this finished yeah. in a month. Wow. They did an excellent job. We Hopefully. Didn't fall off the bridge. <laughs> Hopefully it lasts. We're almost Bay of LA. It's been a really smooth, smooth drive here, especially since that diversion was completed and that bridge is finished. Um, and we're gonna be pulling into our spot. We are, we are going to a new area. Um, we camped at Daggett's before and did not have a good experience. So we've switched it up and we're now we're going to be uh, camping at a hotel 
that is in town um, and they have a couple of pads concrete pads for RVs. I don't think they technically, I don't think they um, advertise it as open to RVers all the time. So it's not a spot that you would be able to go to uh, our camp at, um, but they're allowing us to camp there on this trip. Um, they usually recommend Archelon is the best campground period in all of Bay of LA. There's really only two to choose from. There might be a third now, and maybe I'll find out on this trip where that is. But there's Archelon and there's Daggett's. Um, we don't recommend Daggett's. And we'll talk more about that later. Um, kind of had a bad experience last time we were here. But Archelon, very nice, very nice small campground on the beach. And, um, and then there's also camping out at a beach called La Gringa, which is way outside of town, but a beautiful beach. Um, it's free for the most part or by donation to a wonderful uh, local couple that keep that beach clean and pick up all the trash. Um, so definitely recommend staying out there. Wow, wait until you see the spots we just pulled into. Like, this is not an advertised place. Like, this is not somewhere that you can just pull in and camp at it's not advertised i never knew this place existed but there's literally 50 maybe even 100 rv spots here on the beach in town at bay of la this place is pretty cool but i mean look at this look I doubt, I mean, it looks like there's electric hook hookups here, but I doubt they work. I think that this was an active, really fun place to be a long time ago. And no one's just like kept up with it. But this is really cool. This is so cool. Literally right on the water, in town. Plenty of space for tons of RVs. I mean, we have our own beach a walking distance to all the restaurants and shops. Why they don't do something with this, I have no idea. I mean, this is really, this is really cool. I like it here. So we are here at Easter weekend. Um, I think that it seems pretty quiet here. I don't know if they had the Semana Santa craziness here like they do at other beaches, or maybe they just do it for the week before Easter and then they clear out because um, it is Saturday before Easter and um, no one's here. There's like a family with a tent set up over here hanging out on the beach but it's pretty darn quiet and I was afraid this was going to be crazy town here because of Semana Santa but um, I think we lucked out. I'm glad, I'm glad we're here. Um, for this this weekend because I don't think anything in town is going to be open like you know I could take people there's like a cute little museum here in town but I highly doubt they're going to be open on Easter weekend so I don't know if we're going to have much to do while we're here but at least we are in town and um, close to everything um, and we have our own beach and all that and I, that's really nice I think I think we're gonna have a good weekend here next two nights tonight tomorrow night um, leave Monday morning. Feels so loved. Everybody wants to park next to us. <laughs> it's but it's only for my Starlink. It's your personality. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so concerned about the atmosphere we're driving into. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> there she is. Ain't she a beauty? We really need that here because there's absolutely zero cell service in Bay of LA. So know that.
Every time we visit Bay of LA, I'm reminded how much I really love this place. Um, gosh, it's such, there's so much beauty here. And the birds, I think that is like my most favorite at all of all, is I absolutely love birds. I love photographing birds. And this is like bird paradise here. So many different types of birds. There's terns, there's curlews, there's oyster catchers, there's reddish egrets, there's blue herons, um, there's pelicans and seagulls, and just so many interesting birds. Uh, there's grebes. Um, you see them pop in and out of the water. It's like you see them in the water and then all of a sudden they're gone because they go under. Um, but it's just so cool to watch them all. And I came out here with my camera earlier and just had a ball. Almost got trapped on a, a little sand spit with the tide coming in, um, but it was worth it. This is really cool. Uh, yeah, every time we come here, I just, I love Bay of LA. It's just a really, really neat fishing village here. Definitely worth coming out here, especially if you love birds. Wow, we had um, some crazy, crazy wind and rain last night. Um, but I feel like that's how it goes here in Bay of LA. I think all the times that we have uh, stayed here, we've experienced some crazy weather, crazy wind. Um, it's been like really weird wind this time because it like, it surprises you. It's like the weather is like, perfectly beautiful and really nice and all of a sudden out of nowhere like 20 40 mile an hour wind gust so you come and camp here um don't put your awning out because because you're gonna think oh man the weather's so nice you know let's put the awning out and enjoy it and then bam your awning is up over your camper because the first time we ever stayed here at Bay of LA that happened to us <laughs> and we might even have some video footage from that um yeah that was a that was a crazy first time here and and it's been fun this time too and the last time we were here we were here in January and that happened too it's like we got here and the weather was nice and then the next day crazy 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 wind like we couldn't even go outside we were inside all day that wind was so bad it was like you went outside and you got sandblasted it's leaving day um we have to leave bay of la now we're packing up chris just got some more water for us um because we're we are going to be boondocking again uh today at rancho grande that's where we're headed next it's going to be fun and the weather's supposed to be really nice the next couple of days so it seems like that weather system that came down from california it hit us here last night and it got it all out so hopefully next two days uh, before we cross the border sad we have one day Rancho Grande and Gazaga Bay and then a night in San Felipe and then we cross the border which that's gonna be an adventure because we have been hearing rumors that uh, Mexicali East is closed to RVs um, so we're not really sure what to do yet. I think it, it, it is open. It's just how to get there changed because they're doing construction and the way then how we know how to get there, we have memorized, like we have it down pat. That's the way we always go when we cross the border back in the U S and now we got to figure out another way in and not sure exactly how we're going to do that yet, but we have two days to figure that out. So, radio check. Good, good, DJ, good. Rest of the good. Martin and Elaine, good. <laughs> I know what you mean. She's still with us. Well, we've uh, just ran into an issue and we are in that section of Baja that has no cell reception, zero. Um, and we're pretty much in the middle of nowhere. Um, one of our caravan members, uh, their truck just went into limp mode. It is a diesel truck. Um, not sure why, but we need to make phone call 
and thank goodness we have Starlink. And that's uh, one of the reasons that we have Starlink for Baja is because of the long stretches of no cell reception. Um, so we just set all that up. Chris threw out the satellite dish. I just plugged it all in. And we should have um, some reception here in a minute or so so we can make this phone call and figure out what is possibly going on um, with this truck and hopefully it's something that we can figure out um, we don't have a long drive day today but we're also in an area where we're not going to be able to find a mechanic um, there might be a tire shop around here uh, but I'm not even sure of that we're literally in the middle <laughs> in the middle of nowhere um we are out of bay of la we're back on highway one we are taking our body break right now and then i think we have maybe an hour to gonzaga bay that's down the five um which is another long stretch of no cell reception and um but maybe maybe we could find someone or figure out this issue we'll see Alright, so yeah, it started pouring down rain, so we all ran back to our RVs, but uh, just heard an update, and we should be good, just need to stay at or under 80 kilometers per hour, which is basically what the speed that we do here anyways, um, so we should be good, hopefully uh, we can um, make it back, uh, just or make it to Boa <laughs> Gonzaga Bay just fine, um, I think we'll be okay. We're going to proceed under 80 kilometers per hour. Um, the exception is I let gravity push me downhill. We will have a couple of hills that will go down. So Frank, just stay as slow as you need to go. We are within an hour of getting where we're going to be staying for the night, and then we can hopefully uh, resolve other issues. Okay, sounds good. At least it wasn't at the beginning of the trip. <laughs> the wildflowers are just so stunning right now. Like, I wish I could capture it on camera, but I put the camera on it and it just doesn't, it doesn't capture it. I, I don't think we've ever seen Baja like this. It's just so colorful right now. And there's clouds, which there's like never, hardly ever any clouds in Baja. Like it's you know, gray and dreary, but it's almost making the wildflowers just pop. I mean, like everything, everything's in bloom. So pretty. All right, everybody, if you want to go ahead and get ready to wave goodbye to our friend for the last 2,000 miles or so, good old Highway 1. We're about to turn off on the 5, so wave goodbye, give it the double bird, whatever you feel like you want to do. We are turning on the 5 and we will not see the 1 again. We just drove through some scary areas on the five where uh, there's like rock cliffs um, on either side of us and because of this, um, this weather that came through from California, a lot of the rocks have fallen into the road. Um, thankfully nothing so big that it has blocked the road, but uh, there, were a, a, there was lots of debris in the road. Um, Thankful that we didn't drive through that uh, when that stuff was falling. Um, yeah. Also, the old road, when we first drove down here uh, in 2019, our first visit to Baja, we took Highway 5 down and it was not finished yet. And so we got to experience the old highway and you can still see parts of it. Um, I showed it in the camera. You can still see parts of it in areas, and it's just kind of crazy to look back and think that, wow, we drove on that. <laughs> we were kind of crazy. We drove on that. For 20, 25 miles, like it was. Yeah. It wasn't just a little diversion. It was like massive diversion. Yeah. But we had our truck camper then. I wouldn't do it in this. Yeah. Like we yeah, then we had our truck camper, uh, four by four diesel truck, and much more agile um, 
and dirt road friendly than uh, our Class C, which we lovingly call the Pavement Princess. We just stopped in the market to grab some snacks and to pay for our campsite and now it's time to go on to the campground and if it's not raining I will go on the hunt for some arrowhead sand dollars always buckle up first it's the number <laughs> one rule of driving anywhere all right, everybody has their uh, parking pass. It does have a Palapa number assigned to you, so we're gonna go across the street and you will see the Palapas assigned by numbers and you'll just uh, figure yourself however you feel most comfortable. Lindsay and I are gonna park um, long ways and block in a couple of you, so we'll figure that out when we get there. Always, always in the lap, aren't you? Yeah. Always. All right. He was. He is a always. stickler. He always looks angry. He does look angry. He's just a stickler for the for the truth and doing things right. I like that, that's me. I like to make sure that people are following the rules. Black and white, he's a very, very black and white guy. You either show that you have paid for parking or you do not get in, period. Even though I could have overpowered him both with love or with muscle. <laughs> Looks like clear skies over there, but still cloudy and rainy over here. I think it's just waves of rain. Well, of course it's raining. It just started raining, but uh, I really want to go find some sand dollars. So let's go. It is sprinkling. Hopefully we don't get a downpour. It's been uh, raining kind of hard on and off um, right now, just sprinkling. And oh, the water is really pretty here. Blue. We have almost a white sand beach. It's kind of more like a, a yellow sandy beach. And um, I have not found a sand dollar yet. I've seen pieces of them, like right here. This is a piece of a sand dollar. They break very easily. In fact, here's another one. It's like sand dollar graveyard but I'm mainly on the hunt for the arrowhead sand dollars and last time I found a bunch of them up here in these dunes so I'm gonna go up there and look getting close man this thing is a massive this would have been a massive sand dollar it's 
too bad it's broken. It sucks. Look at that. It's a ginormous one. I just found a giant one. I don't know if it's whole though. I'm gonna be, I'm probably gonna cry if I pick it up and it's broken because it looks massive. <laughs> it's right here. Look at this beauty. Oh, please don't be broken. Please don't be broken. Please, oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 it's a good one. Oh, it's just broken at the tip. At the very tip, that's okay. This is a good one. Look at that beauty. Wow. That's beautiful. Poke the sand out of here. Whoa. Oh, I love finding these. Yeah. I think it's a little bit bigger. Actually, no. Almost the same size. Almost the same size. Pretty cool. So, two. I need to find like five more. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, this is a beauty. This one's perfect. Look at that. Ha ha ha. Oh no, he's broken on the back. Oh well, that's all right. He's pretty on the front. So, I have four. Two of them are perfect. Two of them are broken and I found a rubber ducky. Look at this little guy. He's so cute and little. <laughs> oh my gosh. Look how tiny. <laughs> he's a little broken on the back, but he's super cute. <laughs> I'm glad I came back because I was past this point and I found a cute little one. So now I have five. One, two, three, four, five. We lost. Unfortunately, well, we're leaving Mexico tomorrow, but unfortunately we lost two sets of our caravan members. We lost one yesterday. Um, the couple who um, hit the side of the semi truck with their, with their trailer, they had to leave yesterday because they were having a black tank issue. Um, to the point where they needed they needed to get out of Mexico and go get their trailer fixed to go get their RV fixed unfortunately so they had to leave um, we heard from them last night that they were in San Felipe and heading onward to Mexicali I'm hoping I'll have to ask Chris um, what the update is on them if they were able to cross the border last night and then the um, Frank and Barbara, the couple yesterday that, that were having the truck problems and they couldn't go over 80 kilometers per hour, which is about 45. Um, they finally, their truck went into limp mode and nothing he could do, he couldn't get it out of limp mode. So, and that was right as we pulled into Rancho Grande at our campsite. Like he basically limped down the dirt road into the campsite and he had to call insurance last night. He had to call for a tow truck. Um, fortunately, they were able to find one. It wasn't a traditional tow truck. It was a uh, it was a dually Ford pickup pulling a trailer, um, but they loaded it up and it looked good to go. And he's gonna take them onward all the way to Mexicali today. Um, so they had to leave. Unfortunately, uh, sad. Um, but we, so we've lost two of our caravan members. We had one drop off in La Paz and they've actually had some um, family stuff going on and they've had to hightail it um, back north. So they're actually meeting up with us today in San Felipe, Lonnie and Shelly. So we're gonna have them back. Um, so we've lost, we've lost three caravan members we're getting one back today when we get into San Felipe and then we're crossing the border tomorrow and it's gonna be really sad because I've really loved this group of people like all of them all of them I've loved uh, they've just been an amazing group and 
it's gonna be it's gonna be really sad tomorrow saying goodbye and like we're gonna be crying um and it was sad to lose really sad to lose Russ and Susan and Frank and Barbara I, I liked them a lot hopefully down the road somewhere and we get to see them again I really hope so um that's one one of the reasons why I love life on the road so much it's the people that you meet um people I never would have met if I hadn't left home uh -huh. and um and done this you know I, I I really love doing these caravans and I'm I'm super excited for the ones that we get to do in the future so just more of an update on um, Frank and Barbara's truck. It did unfortunately go in the limp mode as soon as we pulled into Rancho Grande. Um, he was able to get a hold of his insurance. He's got Baja bound. And then you have a choice basically when you get the insurance in between, usually Chubb and HDI. HDI tends to have the better service. Um, and that's the insurance that Frank had through Baja bound and they were able to get him a tow truck um, and they're going to tow them basically all the way to Mexicali. The tow truck driver actually said that he has a diesel mechanic friend in Mexicali that could do all the work and fix the truck. Um, so he's getting towed all the way from Rancho Grande, Gonzaga Bay, all the way to Mexicali. It's, it's a long drive. It's probably about four to five hour drive up there. Um, but they did get that covered by their insurance. Um, we've never experienced a breakdown where you had to get a tow while we were here, but now we've experienced that through one of our um, caravan members. And it was good to see how that all worked out. Last night in Baja went out with a bang. We are here in San Felipe. We decided um, to go grab dinner off the Malacan in town. Yeah, and the Malacan was super busy. It was a beautiful day today, nice and warm. Um, there was a lot of music and a lot of uh, Semana Santa stuff still going on. There were still some tents on the beach. We had a good time, so I think last night in Baja was a success. It's going to be really sad tomorrow. We're going to be waking up bright and early um, and heading right to the border, uh, Mexicali. We've got Lonnie and Shelly back with us and their truck camper. And um, Frank and Barbara, they ended up finding, they found a mechanic in San Felipe. So they hung out with us um, for a little bit earlier and then um, went to go check up on their truck, which was still getting worked on. So unfortunately, we were hoping that it was gonna be an easy fix for them, but the mechanic was still working on it um, as far as like an hour ago from what we heard. So they're gonna be uh, spending the night in the mechanic shop. We've done that a few times here in Baja, um, but 
I don't think I don't think that they will be crossing the border with us tomorrow unless unless he gets it fixed tonight by some miracle or first thing in the morning by some miracle then they might catch back up with us but I think they're probably going to be on their own crossing I don't know if their truck's going to be fixed in time it's been wow it's been what an awesome trip this has been an amazing trip here in Baja um, with this caravan it's been so much fun I'm going to be really sad tomorrow <sighs> well this is it it's a sad sad day we are getting ready we are packing up the RV to leave San Felipe and head to Mexicali to cross the border oh, yeah. bittersweet for sure sorry inverter and fridge Inverter and fridge. Yep. So, yep. Getting everything. We had a full hookup here at Victor's RV Park in San Felipe. Um, it is just south of town. It's about a 10-minute walk to the Malacan from here. We do stay here quite often. The prices have gone up. Like, the prices in San Felipe have gone through the roof. I think just because they're it's a town that's so close to the border um, and a lot of people just come here and never go any further south than Baja and I tell you right now if that's your plan to do that please 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 consider traveling the rest of the Baja Peninsula it is a hundred percent worth it yes the roads can be bad um, we've showed everything that could possibly go wrong while you're down here um, but for us, it's worth it. It's musty at least once. You have to come all the way down and just explore the entire peninsula and not just um, San Felipe. Um, still nice here, you know. You have the beach close to the border, and it's a good little vacation spot if you just have like a week to come down. Definitely, definitely worth it. Um, well, I got to get the rest of the RV ready to go. If, paperwork to hand back to our caravan members, walkie talkie batteries to pass back out and make sure everyone is good to go through town and has a walkie um, because it's going to be a fun day <laughs> trying to cross the border with uh, six RVs, six or seven RVs. You know, some people are going to get caught at lights. That's just what happens when you go through town and that's what the walkie talkies are good for. They're definitely good to have um, just to stay in touch with everyone especially in those sections where you don't have any cell service. But we will have cell service today. We will be in San Felipe. Um, there's pretty much pretty positive there's cell service all the way from here to the border. It's just going to get kind of crazy hectic as soon as we get into Mexicali because we're going to be making turns. There's going to be, you know, there's going to be lights that we're going to have to stop at. And, you know, we sometimes get a little separated let me finish packing up making or let me finish making coffee and packing up the RV and then we are gonna head on out. I don't know I don't know why you want this. <laughs> the last uh, the last briefing was tough this morning. I had my sunglasses on which was good because I had I had to fight back tears. Uh, this group has been an amazing group just leading these 14 people, the experiences that we had, the relationships that Lindsay and I have always talked about, relationships are always number one for us in everything we do. It's just been great to be able to lead this group of people and to spend such good time with them. And looking at them for one last briefing in the morning and talking about Baja and this beautiful place, the fact that this is always the worst day of the year for Lindsay and I, it's always so deeply personally the worst day for me every year is the day that we leave Baja. I I was crying underneath my glasses and I just asked Lindsay if she could tell and she said she could hear my voice cracking, but but it was it's tough because this is a special place. Yeah, I could not I could not tell he was crying, but I definitely heard him losing his voice, but I didn't think that we were close to tears. No. And I don't mind admitting I'm a, I'm a boy who cries because I get connected to things and people and, and that's part of life and living and 
And that's what makes this place so special for us, is the people that we've met, whether we've been leading caravans, or people we've met over the last five years coming down here, or locals that we've gotten to know, business people that we support, just, it's been, it's been a special place. And the last day is always the hardest day. We know we always plan on coming back. We pray that we get that opportunity, but in case we don't, I always leave it with everything that I have. And that's this emotion I feel right now. We have made it into Mexicali and we are heading to the Mexicali East border. Um, we are taking a different way in than what we normally take. We are coming in from the west side of town. Um, everyone is saying that the uh, general RV lane is closed due to construction right now. So we have to basically turn in into the ready lane where all the cars go in and then eventually we're able to um, merge off into the right into the original RV lane. Um, so we are gonna still try to do Mexicali East and just approach it from the west side of town instead of the east side of town. So documentations that you will need when you are crossing the border from Mexico back into the US, you really just need your passport. They will ask for that, they will ask to see that. Um, you might get questioned like what do you do for work or you know what were you doing in Mexico blah 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 you do not need to turn in your FMM you will only need your passport you might need um, veterinary records for your pets if you have pets we've never been asked for it but it's always good to have those on hand just in case as far as inspection goes, all the times that we have crossed the border, we've only been inspected or gone into secondary inspection once. It's always completely luck of the draw. It just, it, it, you either get a red light or you get a green light. <laughs> you get a green light to just keep going through or you get a light to go into secondary. And RVs can fit inside that secondary bay. It's the border wall. Try to get all the way over to the left. This is where we're gonna start queuing up to make that left-hand turn, God willing. Sit. Which means we have to wait 2.3 kilometers worth of waiting to find out if we're allowed to make a left-hand turn. <laughs> so we could be waiting for nothing if they don't let us turn. I drove the RV! You drove the RV. <laughs> that was quick. And we got paid. And we got, Chris just exchanged pesos for dollars. We saw that guy that got out of his car, did the same thing. Huck, you gotta move. And uh, I'm trying to get back in the passenger seat. <laughs> that was really fast. Yeah, but she knew <laughs> I was running in. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> So uh, we had way too many pesos on hand, so Chris just exchanged them <laughs> for dollars. We saw that the other guy that was uh, doing the Mexican fire drill just did the same thing, so we followed suit. <laughs> Good exchange rate? Yeah. I was I mean, afraid it was going to be like terrible. By the time the ATM takes out fees and the banks do their conversions <laughs> and all that, it's, it's about the same. So while you're waiting in line, if <laughs> you want to convert your pesos to dollars. Just do it while you're waiting in line. If it's any consolation, Google says that this is heavier than normal traffic. I, for one, feel better. Thanks, Google. <laughs> I think when we get closer, yeah. I will get out and I will walk down and, and there's usually yeah. a, an officer down there and I'll ask him we can turn that way we're not wasting any more time but we're over a mile away and I'm not I'm not gonna walk that far right now yeah oh no, no. there's no point in walking so just gonna wait it out hey David did you get your steps in this morning
Yeah, I was just thinking if you wanted to go ahead, we're about a mile and a quarter away from the left-hand turn and talk to the officer there and make sure we can all turn through. That'd be great. selfish of you. <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to make you have a have a guilt trip. <laughs> You're a guilt trip in poor David. David, you should take one for the team and go for a <laughs> run. So what's the word? Now that we know there's two lanes yeah. and we could have. <laughs> yep. Well, I got David stepped in. Um, the police officer said we are able to get through here. So looks like there's two left-hand turn lanes. He pointed to the one on the left. Got a bad feeling we're gonna have to be in the one on the right, but he told me to get in the one on the left. So that's what we'll do. Okay. Police officer told us to stay in this left lane, but I don't it says see. Century. It does. It's gonna say that. They said everyone said ready lane. And now we're turning. We're gonna need to go in the ready lane, but it's so narrow. This one? Yeah, I, I mean, I would say that one, but it's too narrow. We're not going to make it in there. So I don't know what to do. So we might be in the wrong lane because this says century. And now we're stuck in it. Because I did not think that was going to be there. But normally we're in that far right lane. Cross our fingers, I might have made the wrong turn. Yeah, we're in the wrong lane. All right, so police officer told us to stay in the left lane. Unfortunately, the left lane only went into Century, and now there is a barricade keeping us over here, and there's no way. There is a road here. There is a road. Oh, thank goodness. So Maybe. we might be able to get over. Um, yeah, let's find out. All right, he's letting us through. Thank you, my man. Thank you, my man. Can we move this one too? Can we get in without hitting our car? Gracias. Oh, our car barely missed that cone. It's all right, as long as it's clear on this side. All right, we are through. And there's nobody here. Oh my gosh. Nobody yet. <laughs> it's like all clear. <laughs> we sat in that lane for over an hour. Unless we get freaking wedged in here. Video mode. Recording started. Wow. Ooh, thank you that that guy was there and he moved cones for us because that was a little nerve wracking <laughs> leading uh, our whole caravan in here. Ending up accidentally in the century lane. But man, it's like clear sailing. There's nobody here and Normally we would be over here, um, but it's definitely blocked off. Look at that. So see where that bulldozer is, is normally where you would be with RVs. Yep, we made it in. It looks like there's barely a wait. This is the, all the construction is right here. This is the lane we would normally be in with the RVs. <laughs> um, now we have to go all the way to the right because these are the new uh, x-ray machines they installed that we will not fit in. So we go all the way to the right here. And 
I'm going to turn the camera off. Ready to start planning your Baja camping adventure but not sure where to begin? Purchase our guidebook through the link below and learn everything you need to know to plan the journey of a lifetime. We cover everything from what you need to know to prepare for the trip to what to expect while traveling as well as helpful tips and insights into what to do and where to stay. This book will give you the confidence to explore Baja, whether you join one of our caravans or not. We're through. It was too narrow anyway, the way they had the barricade. So, well, there's also all these people <laughs> in that left lane to turn left. Oh, gee, we're we made it. It's truly really been it's been a pleasure for us. Our pleasure. Yeah. Nice job. Yeah. Yeah. Hurting cats. <laughs> nice job, you guys. Stop. A little, a little bit easier than hurting cats. <laughs> Only slightly. Yeah. Your happy hours are on your own happy hours. Right? But the first one will be toasting you guys. Uh, happy hours. Safe journey. Group hug and then maybe a one picture, group picture? Yeah. Oh, okay. group picture. Group picture and then group uh, hug or? Huddle up, huddle up. 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 Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I'm going to ask Yeah, we'll be in the morning. Thank you. Bye, Dad. Take care, man. Oh, yeah. Thank you. All right, y'all ready? One, two, three. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. Hey, Everything didn't go the way we thought it would on this journey, but the way it went was one that we'll never forget. The memories we made and new friendships we formed will last a lifetime. And while this caravan had to come to an end, we're excited about all of the ones that we get to lead in the future. Be sure to check out the link below to find out how you can join us on one of our next adventures through the beautiful Baja Peninsula.